The war in Ukraine has proved yet again that many air defense systems are simply powerless against artillery shells. Because of this, many cities constantly suffer from shelling which has led to the destruction of certain infrastructure and civilian casualties. At the moment, there is currently only one system in the world that's capable of defense against this, and it is specifically this system that we'll be discussing in today's video. When Hezbollah, based out of Lebanon, first shelled Israel's northern population centers in the 1990s, the country's defense industry spearheaded ideas for its own short-ranged anti-missile system. In 2004, General Daniel Gold, as head of the IDF's Research and Development Bureau, managed to convince key politicians to support the project, and the Iron Dome concept finally got off the ground. Later, on the Second Lebanon War, it took place in 2006, during which Hezbollah fired around 4,000 rockets, which fell on northern Israel, damaging, among other things, Haifa, the country's third largest city. At the same time, between 2000 and 2008, Hamas fired 4,000 rockets and 4,000 artillery shells, endangering more than 1 million Israelis living in the southern region. 2007 was a pivotal year for the Iron Dome project, as this was the year Defense Minister Amir Peretz chose it to be Israel's primary defense against short-range missile threats. The development of this $210 million system was headed by the domestic company Raphael Advanced Defense System, which works closely with the IDF. The main purpose of the Iron Dome is to counter short-range missiles and 155mm artillery shells with a range of up to 43.5 miles, 70 kilometers, and an operating altitude of up to 32,800 feet. Due to its effective mechanisms both day and night, as well as its all-weather capability, the complex can respond to multiple threats simultaneously. The system consists of three main components, a detection and tracking radar built by defense companies Elta and Israel Aerospace Industries, in collaboration with the IDF, the control center, called the Battle Management and Weapon Control, BMC, built for by Raphael by software developer m -Prest Systems, a rocket launcher that launches Raphael-built Tamir interceptor projectiles, equipped with electro-optical sensors and multiple rudder stabilizers to help the missiles maneuver. The standard battery for the Iron Dome is 3 to 4 launchers, each of which is capable of firing up to 20 missiles. The system's radar, the ELM2084, is responsible for detecting the launch of missiles, as well as the detailed tracking of their trajectory. After receiving data on the projectile, the Israeli army determines whether the target poses a threat to a particular area or object, and then decides whether or not to launch an interceptor missile in order to destroy the enemy missiles before it reaches the predicted impact zone. The main difference between the Iron Dome and standard air defense systems adopted by other countries is that the latter often consist of a radar unit, a missile control unit, and several launchers located relatively close to each other. The Iron Dome, in turn, has a primarily disparate deployment. In other words, each launcher within the system, containing 20 Tamir missiles, can be placed independent from the others and controlled remotely using secure wireless connection. According to Raphael, one Israeli air defense battery is capable of protecting an urban area of about 150 square kilometers. Initial funding for the Iron Dome was provided by Israel, which enabled the deployment of the first two systems. Later on down the road, the United States was involved in financing additional air defense systems, along with refinancing the supply of interceptor missiles, having invested more than $1.6 billion in total in the Iron Dome. In addition to these, the US Congress approved the allocation of another $1 billion in 2022, which had been requested by the Israeli authorities. The Iron Dome began to function in 2011 after being installed at Air Force bases in southern Israel. Another battery was set to be placed in the area nearby the city of Sterot during the escalation of activity along the Gaza border. The air defense system went through a series of field tests and was installed in the Beersheba area in March of 2011 following two rocket attacks by enemy forces that same month. In April 2011, the Iron Dome successfully intercepted a rocket fired at Ashkelon from a Grad MLRS stationed in Gaza. 
Immediately afterwards, an Israeli Air Force aircraft retaliated against the unit that fired the missile. Just one week later, the dome shot down four more missiles. On August 20th, 2011, when a salvo of seven missiles was fired from Gaza at Beersheba, the air defense system destroyed six of these, missing one, which confirmed its high performance. Its developing company had already estimated it to be around 90%. Moreover, the system's success against rocket fire from Gaza has forced the mayors within Israel's southern cities to fight for the right to be the next one to deploy the air defense systems in the area. Although, the IDF has clarified that due to the lack of many batteries, it cannot currently expand the coverage area of the dome. Since the IDF assassinated the Secretary General of the Popular Resistance Committees in Gaza on March 9, 2012, more than 300 rockets have been fired at Israel, 117 of which landed on its territory. The Iron Dome managed to intercept about 56 shells aimed at population centers. These attacks were followed by Operation Pillar of Defense. Between November 14th and 21st, the Iron Dome intercepted 421 rockets, and an additional battery was deployed to the Tel Aviv area shortly after two rockets were fired there. And then, after a couple of hours, it managed to intercept a third projectile launched through the city. The most interesting thing, though, was that this air defense battery was planned to be put into operation no earlier than next year. The total rate of successful interceptions within Operation Pillar of Defense, according to CNN, was 85%. The dome was actively used during Operation Protective Edge in July 2014, protecting Israel from yet another rocket fired from Gaza into the southern, central, and northern parts of the country. By that time, Israel had already deployed 10 air defense systems, and the total number of missiles fired at the country during the 50 days of the operation was 4,594. The dome had destroyed 735 shells that posed a threat to its civilian population and infrastructure facilities, reaching 90% efficacy on hitting targets and intercepting more than 70 missiles. At the same time, only 25% of the rockets fired from Gaza were considered threatening due to low accuracy, unstable trajectory, and their overall build quality. In May of 2018, Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps IRGC, announced it had fired 20 missiles from Syria at Israel in retaliation for the latter's recent airstrikes on IRGC facilities. Out of these, 16 shells didn't even reach the Israeli border, and the dome handled the remaining four. A little later, in November of 2018, the air defense system successfully intercepted 100 missiles launched from the Gaza Strip. In January 2019, the IDF released footage of a Syrian Arab Army SAA, missile attack on the Golan Heights that was intercepted by the Iron Dome. As it turned out, the video was filmed by skiers who were at the Mount Hermon Resort after which the authorities hastily closed it until further notice. The attack itself was a response to Israel launching nine missiles at SAA targets in the western part of Damascus. But perhaps the most notorious use of the dome was the 2021 Israeli-Palestinian crisis, when Hamas fired over 4,300 rockets at Israel from May 11th to May 21st. Moreover, in the first day alone, 470 rockets were fired, 17% which were aimed at Tel Aviv from a greater range than before, and around 680 shells fell in the Gaza region itself. The Iron Dome once again lived up to expectations, shooting down 90% of the fired shells. So can such an effective air defense system help Ukraine knock out the missiles launched by Russian invaders who regularly fire at the country's civilian population? In early June of 2022, Ukrainian ambassador to Israel, Yevhen Kornichuk, announced that his country was extremely interested in acquiring the Iron Dome to protect its citizens, asking the Israeli authorities to get out of their comfort zone and look at the reality of the situation. At the same time, he stressed that the system's co-designer, the US, isn't against such a deal. Earlier in 2021, Congress even included an amendment proposed for the 2022 defense bill. It called on the Biden administration to sell or transfer new air and missile defense systems to Ukraine, including the potential shipment of the US Army-operated Iron Dome battery. 
Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky praised the effectiveness of the Israeli dome, while nonetheless acknowledging that this system is unlikely to suit his country. First of all, this is due to the fact that the size of the Kiev region alone, 28,121 square kilometers, exceeds all of Israel, 22,145 square kilometers, by 6,000 square kilometers. Israeli Colonel Ari Zaydan agreed with him confirming that their air defense system is unlikely to suit Kiev, since it was created under the specific requirements of Israel to defend against the handmade and the country's other friendly neighbors. In the case of Russian invaders and missiles like the Caliber, Dagger, X-22, or Iskander, the power of the Iron Dome is simply not enough to cover the entire country. Ukrainian Defense Minister Alexei Reskinov is convinced that nowadays the air defense forces are doing the impossible, but Ukraine critically needs its own air defense and missile defense system. The fighters of the armed forces of Ukraine have greatly intimidated the Russian invaders, due to which their pilots will now not even risk entering any airspace guarded by the Ukrainian military. However, with crews and ballistic missiles, things get much more complicated. Like cowards, the enemy fires them off from Russia, Belarus, occupied Crimea, the Black Sea, and the Caspian Sea all without even approaching the borders of Ukraine. On the other hand, if the NAS-AMS mobile air defense systems transferred from the United States, along with the IRIST promised by Germany, become only an intermediate step on the way to more serious assistance to Ukraine, such as the American Patriot and other air defense and missile defense systems, then before long such systems may well protect those cities with an invisible shield. After all, several times a day, these have been pinging red on the radars due to the constant threat of rocket or artillery fire from the Russians. Karkov, Nikolev, Dnipro, Zaforoshai, Nikopol, and other Ukrainian cities that have become frontline can still be defeated if Ukraine's allies can continue to regularly supply perfect air defense systems. Do you think Ukraine will be able to acquire enough anti-aircraft and anti-missile systems to defend its skies? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next one.